Okay, we're continuing our conversation about multi-stage compression here. We're looking at a song from my album Six Tape. These are my vocals uh, in this tune, and these are vocals that I self-cut actually on this exact same rig that you are hearing my voice on right now. The compression is coming from the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II, which is an LA2A style compressor. My voice is actually quite dynamic. So I, I usually compress myself quite a bit on the way in, but you may not necessarily need to have as much as I do, depending on how much dynamics the vocal you're recording has. I mean, I tend to sing quite quietly in some places and, and, and really nearly scream in others. But ideally, you're cutting with some compression on the way in. That is the first stage of the multi-stage compression. You would either be using an outboard compressor or a real-time virtual compressor that you're actually cutting. To my knowledge, the only company doing that is also Universal Audio through their console app. But if you know about some other companies that are doing similar things, I would love to hear about that as well. We're going to take a look at uh, the lead vocal on this song here. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of multiband compression, which I like to use on a lot of things. So let's just take a look at that first. Shut up the stars and dance in the fire. Remember what you told me. So yeah, there you you can see that it's doing a little bit of work, probably no more than a negative 5 dB of compression on any one band at any one time. And you don't necessarily need to use a multiband compressor for your tracks, but I'm just showing you what I do. And this is sort of the more important one, I would say for you especially. This is your main compressor on every individual channel of vocals. I am using an LA3A, which I mentioned specifically in the course. It's very easy to use because there's no attack or release time and the ratio is set. That's all just uh, happening automatically underneath the hood, which is great. So all you have to do is set how much peak reduction you want and then set your gain and you're good to go. So let's uh, take a look at what that's doing. Yep. Shit got nuts and you can't deny it Every stick of dynamite we had to light it Every sticky situation we would find it And you're goddamn right we liked it We never got bored and we never got tired We never needed anybody else to try it So as you can see there, this thing is really just getting kissed It's probably never doing more than negative 2 dB of compression That's because I knew I recorded a lot of compression coming on the way in In your particular case, I would say, you know, you might want to look at negative 3 dB of compression or something like that on average for all the individual vocals. But the whole idea of multi-stage compression is that you're just doing a little bit of compressing in each stage. And this sort of perfectly illustrates that point, really just kissing the compressor here. And as you can see, all the vocals have that multi band compressor and then have that LA3A. So these are, are all the individual vocals. There's like eight or nine of them here. And then those are all being bussed to my vocal bus. Um, I also happen to have a, a dry vocal bus here too to let a little bit more of the transients through. As you can see, that's more than 20 dB lower than my main vocal bus. But yeah, as you can see here, all the individual vocals are going to bus seven and eight. And then the vocal sub is picking them up here at bus seven and eight. And then I have a compressor there. This is the last stage of your multi-stage vocal compression. In this case, I'm using this metric halo channel strip. In case you don't know, a channel strip is just something that has multiple things. Like in the case of an outboard channel strip, there would be a preamp, usually an EQ, and then a compressor or a limiter or both, or an option to choose either or. As you can see here, this channel strip has a gate and a limiter, which I'm not using in addition to the EQ and compression, which I am using. 
So again, this last stage of compression is compressing all of the vocals rather than each individual vocal. And what that has the advantage of doing is making it so that when there's just one vocal or whether there's many vocals, they're all going to be at approximately the same level. And again, it just provides you one more stage of compression to make sure that you're getting a nice, smooth, even product at the end. So let's uh, take a look at the chorus here and see what this is doing to compress all of the vocals. So there you go. And again, you don't necessarily need to use this particular compressor, or any of these particular compressors. That's not really the point. The point is that you're recording at multiple stages on the way in when you're actually cutting the vocal and then on the individual tracks and then on the vocal bus. And um, each of those stages of compression can be pretty small or can be a lot too, depending on the circumstance. Typically, if you just compress a little bit in each of those stages, you'll have a nice even product at the end.